Hey, top of the morning, Michael here. <clears throat> Excuse me, grandkids call me Rue. Got the stuff today. <clears throat> I've had two two weeks of uh, a good run with sinuses going like, hey, it feels like a real human being today. I feel like a human being something. Uh, stuffed up is what I feel like. Blessing, glad you're on the show today. I'm going to say hello to some of you. And then today, uh, I know you're going to find this hard to believe, but uh, is your light there? Mm -hmm. I find this hard to believe. We're going to talk about creativity just for a little while. And then I'm going to drag out some uh, Sumi ink, uh, a piece of Kilimanjaro paper, my little uh, skillet. I'll show you this. Let me get to my desk here. Let me do a split thing. I'll show you what my desk looks like. There it is. Right there. Yeah, uh, I, I think uh, I saw that quote. Yeah, it's a Montreat sticker. Well, I just stuck it on there to kind of hide my palette. You know, it looks a little more official. Uh, this has magnets on it. And so... Uh, Boop, sticks right to my cast iron. It usually stays on. We'll see. Oh, look, it's holding. There it is. This is a little lodge sandwich skillet. Who would do one sandwich at a time? It's a little sandwich skillet. You can like, seriously, but it's cute. Uh, but I didn't buy it to cook in. I cook in classic old um, cast iron from the 40s, 30s, 40s. Even I have one to turn the century. So did an eight pound tenderloin this week for these guys that showed up at my house who got all the fireplace pokers. If you saw any of the blacksmithing I did last week. So uh, that's keeping those covered for a little while. Spray a little water on there. Kilimanjaro, you know I love Cheap Joe's family and all those folks up there in the mountains of Boone. Um, and yeah, there's other great art stores around. I'm not knocking them, not complaining about them. I just kind of started riding this pony and have stayed on it. And so that's been kind of fun for me to do. Here's a little picture in picture. There I am right there. Let me move me around just a little bit there. Doesn't that look refreshing? All right. <laughs> Sorry. Let me back out here just a little bit. Give me a little more uh, different view of the desk and see if I could turn this camera around just a tad more square. Hold on one second here. The producer of the show apparently didn't get up early enough. That that would be me. Uh, had a late night. Uh, two two granddaughters here, and one we were going through um, <laughs> a duffel bag that seriously would barely fit on my entire art desk here, full of cowboy 
uh, regalia, lassos to dusters to my 1800s cowboy shirt, uh, my chaps, which are made out of uh, real cowhide that came from a theater up in New York and uh, years ago. And she's going to do, uh, this is the one who's going to Argentina in uh, July, but she's before that, she's spending a month at a young life camp up in uh, Glens Bay, New York. So just a couple hours, two and a half hours north of the city. Um, and uh, she's going up there, and one night they have a Western night. So I said, You got to pack these chaps. You got to just show up. And because these came from a theater here one night when I did storytelling back in the early 90s here. And so, uh, you know, it's kind of fun. So here we go. Let me say hello to some of you and jump right in on creativity. Uh, and you think about while I'm saying hello to folks, if you want to just jot down a note, um, think about uh, the. Here, you don't have to answer, but you can if you want. Who's the most creative person you, you've ever seen? And I'm, I'm, I'm talking about who inspired you. Not not have you seen on, you know, uh, television is fine, but TV's, TV's got, I don't know if you've ever been in a TV shooting concept, but it's not usually just one person. Very rarely is it one person. The screenplay starts with a book or an idea, but there's, you know, television shows have three to 300 different people, maybe more than that. And movies have, I've been on a set with 150 people doing films. Everybody has an idea. I'm talking about somebody that was in your life in your school. You don't have to, you don't have to write them down. Well, I would love for you to write them down so that you, maybe you send them a note this week and just say, you inspired me. Okay. Uh, and, and I will, I will tell you about a guy that just came to mind and I hadn't thought about this guy in 35 years. Wow. Got it. Okay. All right. So here we go. Let me say hello to you. Tamley Marie. Thanks for jumping on. Karen Binder, Bender, woo hoo uh, Heather Kuman, Jason Nichols. Yep. See a Montreal sticker. I knew I saw that push by. Welcome on the show, Jason. Always June Jones. Thank you for being on. Jennifer Yentz, top of the morning, friends from sunny Indiana. It's cool here in Charlotte. Yesterday I wore a a little. Uh, light vest all day. Um, and it looked pretty dapper. It was a, a down vest. I'm just kidding. You. Uh, Pat Lightbody, welcome to the show. Uh, Marie Pikert, thank you for being on from California. Gene, John, Gene Jimerson and Thalzer. Look, I appreciate the people on the East Coast, but those people on the West Coast who get up at, you know, five o'clock to watch this or 530, I'm going like, what's the matter with you people? <coughs> Lori, uh, Sue Kane, and, and for the fact that you're still awake, uh, you know, at uh, Sue Kane from Southern Australia, I love having you on, and I love your style of art. Lori Stanley Handelmeyer Henderson, thanks for being on the show. Uh, let's see, Jason, Catherine Dietz, Laura Abbott, thank you. Good morning, Rue. I saw the notification, but needed to head downstairs and plunge the fresh press and bring it back up here. Coffee plunge, and I'm ready to go. Okay, Laura, thank you. She's such a person of a few words. <laughs> All right. Um, I read it though. See, I actually read it. Laura Schleitning, thanks for being on. This is the only time I really see all these quotes. They can come and go. Uh, coffee in hand. I'm having a little builder's tea today. You know why I drink builder's tea, right? I'm back to it. They've, um, I think they've gone back to the original recipe out of Britain, but it's because of the box. The box says this country wasn't built on chamomile. That's a creative statement. So we're going to talk about creativity today. So that's what's in my cup. Hmm. I drink Thai food too, uh, <clears throat> but uh, Builders has been probably what I started with. I drink about 40 teas until I found that flavor that I really wanted. Deborah Lynn Tauber, thanks for being on the show. Uh, Deborah Spangler, Marie uh, Awad, thank you. Checking in in a few minutes. Um, checking in for a few minutes. Well, we're glad you're here. Uh, James O. Wade Jr., always uh, love your comments. and Thank you, Sharon Clark. Uh, Irene Schranz, is it Schranz? Schranz, having a cup of coffee. Um, Chris Whitaker, or Whitaker, I kind of like to say. Um, Sanders Kenneth, Kenneth Sanders. Hello, Rue, love your chickens. Just retired from the poultry industry after 47 years. Might take up some doodling myself. <laughs> hey, if you don't take it up, then something else is going to take up your precious time. You heard it right here. So today, start. I don't care if you start with the pencil. I don't care if you run down to the local... Um, a restaurant and uh, steal a pin out of the waitress's apron. She's carrying 25 or he is, you know, they got a pocket full. Just take one say, Hey, I need one of those. I think I'm about to break out into art. 
Whoa, what a great thought that is. Terry Tardy, thanks for being on the show today. All right, I love Saturdays because I can just kind of let it roll here. As soon as you mentioned the duffel, duffel full of Western wear, I thought that has to be for Young Life Camp. Yeah, Frontier Ranch. Uh, from 1978, I was the program director there, Terry, and also in 87, uh, what's that, uh, nine years later, uh, no, uh, 10 years later, wow, 78, 80, no, that's whatever it was, yeah, 78, nine, nine years later, went back and I did it again, and uh, crazy, so I was going through all those stories last night with Lilybug, and uh, I happened to wear my best, best pair of stage chaps at Frontier Ranch out in Buena Vista, Colorado, and I loved them so much that I didn't steal them. I laid them out on the floor on top of an old bed sheet, and I traced them with a Sharpie, and I did the whole tracings, and I rolled them up tight, packed them, brought them home. It was about five years, six years later, maybe about nine years, eight years later, I was in uh, doing a camp up in upstate New York, and uh, uh, I, I, I was doing Bigfoot. I know that's hard to believe, and um, I missed the Adirondacks, and I... Um, I literally, one night telling the story, I looked back on the back of the stage and there was this beautiful old cowhide. And so the friend that ran the property then said, yeah, we're getting ready to change all this. All that's going to go away. I said, what are you doing with that cowhide? He said, it's, it's just got to go. So I just climbed up on this ladder that was backstage and brought it out, climbed up and I pulled it down and I rolled it up and I put it in a box and I said, my address is on there. This ought to ship it to me when I get back home. And it was about two weeks later, this package shows up and I took that cowhide with hair still on it you know those brown and white spots and split the brand and laid it out on my template that i traced in colorado and i went and got the belt buckles and all the little rondelles and all the little straps and i set about with copper rivets making myself a pair of chaps still have them today i'll show you a picture one of these days uh Jim Henson, somebody said, there's a creative person. No kidding. All right, so let me say, uh, I think I, uh, Patricia Crowder, thanks for being on. Uh, Kelly Berger, always good to have you. Tony Fox. All right, here we go. Uh, Davika Das, good morning to you. All right, so um, you're going to have to put up with a little bit of a, a snozzer blow a little bit this morning. Here we go. I apologize. There's nothing you can do about it. It's like the, I, I have the cough button in radio. You know, you can, you're actually in your radio board. You have a button if you're going, <coughs> excuse me, but nobody can see your face here. It's like, wow. All right, here we go. Uh, did you think of somebody that, um, that made you creative? Uh, in, in my life, I was probably about uh, eight years old and uh, his name was Winkler. That was his last name, Winkler. And uh, I won't tell you his first name, but his last name was Winkler. And, uh, uh, I liked him because he always was talking about something interesting that he was working on or building. Uh, <clears throat> he was just in his 30s then probably. And uh, he always had a good pocket knife. And I had already, at, at eight, or I was carrying my first little pocket knife. And uh, I was a little Barlow, had one blade, you know. And um, then I got a Barlow with two blades, you know, and I could open it up like this. And um, uh, so it was, it was pretty cool. Um, he was whittling one day on a little piece of cedar and he was just sitting there and I knew it was, man, his knife must be sharp. It is just rolling these little shavings around like this. They were just fabulous looking. And I realized that uh, it was turning out to be a flower. And I realized later that that entire process of shaving those little curls like that would become a, a rooster tail in my own life. And so uh, me seeing him take a little piece of wood like this and carve it into a tiny little rooster. I mean, look, here's the, here's the size of my pen. You can see how big that rooster head is there. Um, and so just, just the fact that I could curl that little curl. Can you see that little shaving right there under my finger? Let me see if I can show you that. Look right here. Look at this little curl right there. It is just tiny. It's minuscule. He was making those little things with a sharp knife. And I thought, that's the most creative thing I've ever seen as an eight-year-old. I'm going, I'm going to do that. Well, it was those several boxes of band-aids later that I learned to control the knife blade in this finger so that it didn't slip and it wasn't holding it like this and carving really hard. It was just finesse. And so it's the first person that I saw creatively really use the creativity feature in finesse. Um, um, and so 
I was impressed by that. And I saw my dad do things, and I saw my dad play the harmonica and teach me chords on the guitar. And so all those things built in. But who's that person? I hope you wrote somebody down just for yourself. And if they're still on this planet, uh, and they may not be, but if somebody in their family is, uh, there's an old letter that I keep here um, in in this folder next to me. Um, and I don't see it's covered now by journals and notebooks. Sorry. I wasn't even thinking about it until just now. But there's a letter here that uh, I was meeting with a friend yesterday and some consulting. And I said, do you remember the letter that we got from the person for a video that we did uh, 12, 15 years ago? And, he, and it inspired him to go out and buy a new pen and start writing notes to people. And he sent us a letter. And he also turned the pack piece over and said, I appreciated the sketches that the talent, that was me then, I'd done this video, I'd sketched a little thing on the back. And he sketched something, and I wrote a return letter to him. Unfortunately, uh, the university that he went to, and I, th I think he was a professor there or something, he bought a leather bag from this company that I was helping. He, it, it returned to me, and I kept it, and I kept trying to find out where he moved to, and I haven't done a great job of it, but I should still go back to that university and say, do you have a forwarding address for this guy? Because I want to say that I think we inspired him, but he inspired us by writing back. So people hold on to those letters. Okay, here we go. Take a piece of Kilimanjaro this morning. Uh, but I want to talk to you about creativity as I do this. One is, here's, here's the thought right away. Um, where does creativity come from? And so uh, if you've got a notepad, you might want it this morning because I'm going to throw out a few ideas of some books. I'm not saying go buy these books, for heaven's sakes. Um, I went over to my just my top shelf this morning and I pulled off, I think, what, five or six books here that have affected me. And I'm going to say, no, don't, no, no, no. Here's all you need to know about this one. I had a budget years ago where I could really study and buy and work because I was I've, all my life I've been hired for creative positions. And so people come up to me and they say, oh, you're so creative. I just wish I were creative. And I'm going like, yesterday, two people said to me, oh, you're sketching. Did you just do that? That's They ask it almost backwards because they saw me with my little Altoid box open and this, and I was having a bacon, lettuce, tomato sandwich. She delivered it and said, oh, my gosh, did you just do that as I'm painting with my little water brush? And I said, well, well, yeah, I did. And she said, I wish I could do that. And I said, how bad do you wish you could do it? And she looked at me real funny. She said, what do you mean? And I said, do it. And she said, well, no, I, I, I can't do that. And I said, okay, do you ride a bicycle? Well, yeah. And so you remember how to ride a bicycle. So, but I can't draw stick figures. She went through all the lines. I said, good, because I'm not drawing stick figures. Oh, well, I can't draw a straight line. Good. Very little that I draw has a stick, a straight line to it. And so, in fact, even if I tried to draw a straight line, I wouldn't. That's why a, you have a ruler or a scale for. It. You know, I keep an engineering scale. Yeah, I keep one that I had in high school here. And I go in in uh, mechanical drawing. You know, I'd have a scale and a, and a protractor and a flexible curve. I didn't have all those things, you know. So I still have a flexible curve here somewhere. I keep it up here. Some of you want to know sometimes how I got the the type of that font wrapped around that thing just perfectly. Look, there it is right there. You just take this and you just go, hey, you got my little rooster right there. And I'm just going to take this and go lightweight. And then I'm just going to write my words there. And then when it dries, I'm going to erase the line. You go like, seriously, what a great thing. Okay, so it's a flexible curve. And this is an inexpensive one. This is just a, a cheap one. But look. That's a flexible curve right there. I want a driveway coming down the hill. That's just the way I'm going to put it in. I built a pond in the backyard, Grant and I did. And you know what we used to lay out our our uh, pond? We used uh, a garden hose, two garden hose, and just type, put them together and then laid them down and said, that's the creek coming down. Here's the pond. Now spray that with paint and then dig it. So something that gives. So straight lines, where are they? They're overrated. All right. Uh, she said, I wish I could do it. And it brought me back to some words of Dr. Jim Poole when I was shooting videos for him and we were trying to push out uh, more things on people who like me are fast brain, not ADD, ADHD, fast brain people. Okay. There's a difference. I'm fast brain. People say you must be ADD, ADHD. And I go, well, that's offensive. I'm fast brain. They go, oh, I'm sorry. I said, no, 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 it's, it really isn't, but it got their attention. So where does creativity come from? Um, I, th I think uh, some of you have God-given creativity. I just believe that uh, if you ever watch The Voice, some 
Young people just have it. They're not trained in vocal school. They've never been to, they don't know a note from anything and they just open their mouth and and they go, oh my gosh, that's, that's on key. They just have it. My grandson has perfect pitch. I can actually go, ah, and he'll go, oh, 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 you almost had me there, but I know that's a C sharp. And I'll go, seriously? And he goes, yep, he goes, ding. And you go, oh my gosh, or an F or D. And he'll go, that's a D. And I'll go, hmm, he'll go E minor. Just, he has this amazing ability. He just hears it. He was born that way. I think some of you are born that way, but I think you can learn to ride a bicycle. I think you can learn to sketch. So stop telling yourself that you're not creative and stop looking at everybody else and say, oh, I just wish I was as creative as that person. Okay, give it up. Just work on it. Push the edge a little bit. Quit worrying about failure. And I haven't said this to this group on Saturday morning in a long time. I say this to my art classes all the time. Would you stop worrying about failing and just plunder out there somewhere and drop it? And then have somebody look at it and go, hey, you know, this could be better. Okay? And you go, oh, that offends me. If you get offended by your art and someone who might know art or love art or see art or be drawn to art telling you that your art could be a little better... Stop being offended by it and listen to what they're saying. Make a note of it and drive home thinking or usher them out the door and sit there sipping your cup, cup, cup of tea and saying, maybe they're right. Maybe I should change that. Maybe that chicken's feet are too big. <laughs> Carol doesn't mince words, but she doesn't mince them because she doesn't like what I do. She is iron sharpening iron, if you want to quote a proverb. You look and you say, this is good, but you know what? I have an idea. I'm working through that right now with a granddaughter who writes songs like crazy. She's 11 years old. She's my granddaughter. That, and so today we're recording something from her. And I'm saying, not too fast, not too slow, a time out. You're not that person. Your, your voice hasn't even matured yet. So easy does it. She goes, well, I know how to do this. I go, no, you don't. So don't be offended by your grandfather telling you that, I've set up more microphones and you are, oh my gosh, 200 more times of wires and microphones and you are even old. So I'm not telling you because I don't like you. I'm telling you because I love you. So find somebody that you can lean into. You can learn to be creative. Um, uh, people say, well, I, I haven't painted in years. I've lost it. No, no, no. Is it like riding a bicycle? A little bit, except that when you fall in the street, you can get hurt more when you're older, <laughs> but you also, uh, you also will be more careful when you start up. And so, but, and you'll be a little rusty, you know, you wobble a little bit, you know, I haven't been on a bike in years, but you'll, it'll come back to you. It, art, it comes back to you. You let, and it comes back to me every day. I lose it sometimes over the edge. I, I, I do too much. I won't put the brush down. I do too little. I didn't do enough. There's always that fine balance. So I just want you to say about creativity. Um, Jim, Dr. Jim Poole had this thing that I really loved. He said, uh, you see one, you do one, and you teach one. And I'm telling you, those three things have made a difference in my life. I was doing that with my welding, my music, and, and most of the, the sculpture things that I built. I wasn't doing it in watercolor because I wasn't a watercolor artist. When, when I started working with Dr. Jim, I never really done more than just a little how to build something in my journal. You know, a little sketch of something. But I had never thought about really applying the art skills. But one day I'm shooting this video of him and I said... Here's what happened. And I want you to know this story because it's so important to how you teach your grandkids and the people around you and how you learn. I took a piece of paper about this size. It was just a drawing pad like this. And I laid it open and I gave him one of my favorite pens. You know what that was? It was a flare pen, an early flare, just like this one. And I said, boom. He goes, oh, I love that pen. I said, don't love it enough to put it in your pocket. It's one of the old ones. And I said, I want you to just, I'm going to put the camera right here. And I just want you to start talking. I had him mic'd up and I said, I want you to tell me how you learned something. He didn't use Latin. He could have. He could have said, repetito es madre studiorum. But he didn't. Repetition is the mother of study. But he said, uh, in the military, in the armed forces, I, I got up, I got dressed, I made my bed, I 
They had breakfast. I marched. I, you know, he goes through this list. He had about four or five things there. And he goes, we take our orders and we go do this. And then I come in. And so he said, next morning I get up, I do this, I do this, I do this, I do this. And next morning I do this, I do this, I do this, I do this. Next morning I'm going like, how long is he going to do this? Next morning I do this and this and this and this. Next morning I do this, this and this. Oh my gosh. So he said, he comes over like this and he says, see one, do one, teach one. See how backwards I did that? Because mm -hmm. I'm fast break. See one, do one, teach one. People say, yeah, but I don't, I don't know how. Yesterday I sent out a little video on some people on how to draw quick people. And, uh, you know, I started showing you what I learned via the YouTube and um, what uh, uh, Bob Burridge had taken from, you know, everybody takes something from somebody. And you go like, okay, so you tell me which is the best for your journal. Tell me, tell me which one works the best for your journal. And then say, and your grandkids are going to go, oh my gosh, you drew those cool little people in there. How did you draw those cool little people in there? I really like them. And you go, I just drew them in there because I, uh, I want I've done this just recently on my other show. And I, I just want you, most people have on blue jeans. So let's just put some jeans on this person. And, um, and then this person, I just, he has got this uh, leather bag on his shoulder there. And so that's, that's going to be a cool leather bag right there. And I got a new leather bag yesterday. Well, I didn't really get it to keep, but I got it to shoot a commercial with and so some things is working. And so, so, um, so this little person who appears on my drawing appears like this, this little horseshoe head. Maybe y'all have already uh, drawn some of these and, and then, uh, cone shaped legs coming to J Jason and architects draw these people all the time. They draw them all the time. And so maybe this person has just got a little dark head. Maybe he's got on darker jeans. That's just the pin. And then he has on this red shirt. So they look like a Christmas tree walking. But you see what's happening there with these two little people. So I see one, I do one, and then I teach one. So I'm teaching you right now what I saw and what I've been practicing. And so, oh, oh my gosh, but I have two men here. And really, I want them to know that they're, they're going to see this lady here. So here she is. Look. Look at her. She's got on a, a T-length dress, and she's offering these guys uh, a little advice. And so there she is, and there she stands. I'm going to have her dress just be a little uh, red-purple, just like that right there. That's a nice little uh, smock. She's wearing a smock. And her hair is, um, oh, wisdom. She's got a little bit of, of, of buff in the hair there. There it is. Oh, my gosh. That's, that's pretty cool right there. And maybe I could come in and get a little of this uh, peach and just put on her legs and her arm there. That's, that's fabulous. So I just made these storytellers simple as that. And they're here on this drawing paper. And so it changed me thinking like, oh my gosh, I just learned something new. I'm going to stay with that. I'm going to repeat it over and over. It's why I say draw 50 bicycles and then you will figure out a bicycle. You know, you'll just go, oh my gosh, I just, I just drew 50 bicycles. I'm going to draw the wheels and then I'm going to draw this, uh, this triangle like this, and then I'm going to draw another triangle like this, and then, well, I drew, drew that backwards, but you see where I'm headed. Two triangles make a bicycle. Did you know that? You draw the wheels first. You know, we, how many times have we done this? And as over and over and over is the point. There's a combination to something. Can you lose your creativity? You can get rusty. Now, let's don't talk about drawing. Let's just talk about creativity of the mind. And that's where I wanted to go this morning before I paint a couple of things. So a half hour, I'm going to rattle on, and then uh, you never know what you're going to get. I'm going to throw some books on the table. Wait a minute. I got to cover this up, don't I? Or I'm going to get stuff all over my books. This ought to be a mess. Let's see if I can do this. Hold on one second here. Hang on. I'm going to come back to this piece of paper here in just a second. Ah, rats. Hold on a second. I had a technical glitch there. There we go. All right, I ripped off two sheets. And by the way, I think I have a new one of these over there. Yeah, I already bought one. I already bought one. All right, so I'm going to put this back like it was. And then I'm going to lay some books on the, on the table. And I want to show you, of all these books, I've chosen one that you might want to get your hands on. And uh, so don't worry about writing them down yet. I just want to tell you what they are. And here they go. Ready? All right. Uh, the, Art of, the Art of Innovation by Tom Kelly. 
Um, the Art of Innovation by Tom Kelly. Man, it is wordy and heavy, and it's for companies that want to take creativity to the next level. And you might have it on somebody's library. Check it out. At the, check it out at the library. Don't don't buy this book. Um, it's just, and, and it's not because I'm against it. I thought it was a great book for at the time, but it's probably ten or twelve years old. And so, uh, same with the riddle. This is really good, and you can rewrite this. This is if you're a deep reader and you just want to. There's a great story in here about how Braille was created and it is worth the price of the book but you could look it up and just read it on <laughs> the internet and uh and you see how i write in my book there's this one story already put here and i wrote page 81 it's on braille so if i go to page 81 in this book this is what keeps me from underlining in my books um there's an underline i just saw go by i must have loaned this one out because i very rarely do it but here here it is lewis braille right there so i'll always make a note History is almost forgot. Da, 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 da. Lewis Braille was a student uh, at the Howie School 13 years after it opened his door. Braille had been, he'd been blind since the age of three. He, he was playing at his father's desk, who was a leather uh, maker, or a, 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 he worked with leather goods, and he was playing with the awl, and he poked his eye out. And then he lost sight in the other eye due to infection. And it's a sad, sad story. It's why eye protection when I work in my blacksmith shop or anywhere else is important. But this is a good book. It's got some stories in there about how people push through. That's not the book for you yet, um, unless you just want to go. This is just by a good friend of mine, Leighton Ford. He used to travel always with Billy Graham. He married Billy Graham's sister, as a matter of fact. And Leighton lives here in Charlotte. And this is a, a pretty powerful uh, book. I see that I've had it since 1995 and I love it because it's the power of the story. So why would I link the story with this? Because my art is about story. So you're going to see that I'm pushed to storytelling. Telling stories to children is by Marshall Shelley and it's a great little book too. And I use it sometimes with ministry ideas and just reminding me why I tell stories the way I do. Here's another story book. Uh, maybe the best book I've ever read on stories is The Story Factor by Annette Simmons. If you're into storytelling, you should read this book. If you have friends that are in the corporate world and they feel like their sales are going downhill or they can't figure out what's going on, they should read this book by Annette Simmons. It's The Story Factor. Uh, you'll get bogged down, but you'll find some places in here where the story and the heart is so much more important than the facts and the statistics. So, Sometimes in art, I would apply that creative fact to my art. Let me tell you what I just said there. The heart of the art, oh, it sounds like noodle doodle fiddle piddle, connects so much more than all of the detail and all of the finished paintings and all the little punches and squibs and things that you do to finish the paper all the way to its fullest. So for me, it gave me the license to be creative by painting things that never get finished. Some of my favorite work never gets finished. My favorite bridge by Justin is the Bridge of Lions in um, St. Augustine that never got finished. It's downstairs. Um, and so, and, and I'd, I'd love to show it to you, but I don't, yeah, I took it downstairs to uh, finish the framing on it. And so the point is, is that it's not finished. Here's, here's an example. I don't need to finish this to show you my violin that I love. It's just half of one. I will frame this and I like this painting. So for me, I don't need everything to be just pristine and done. Look, I'm, I'm not a fine artist. It's fine with me. So if you're a fine artist who does that, I am not critiquing, nor am I condemning your art. I'm just saying that for me, this opened a door in creativity that allowed me to paint lots more things that I wouldn't paint. If I had to do the entire violin and all the strings pristine and glistening and all the tuning pegs and all those things, I would just blow a head gasket because I'm see one, do one, teach one. I'm out of here. I'm fast brain. So for me, my creativity, I have learned to cater toward that in my creativity. Does that make sense? I hope it does when you see why this allows me the freedom to just go, you only painted a half a violin. I go, well, it ran out of paint. Or I got tired of it. Or I can't play it anyway. Or look, I have a million little satirical, um, sarcastic answers that I can use 
But I just liked it this way. I thought, I love the wood grain. And what if I mess the other half up? And I just, and, and also the paper's way too small to draw full violin on at the size that I started. And I think I really love it like it is. All right. Story Factor. It's a good book. Uh, Tinker Toys. Nah, check it out at the library. It's got some interesting stuff in it, but here's a great example of just paint half the violin. This could have been a three chapter book and it would have been terrific if, if, if this guy, if, if uh, Michael walked into my house right now, he and I'd have a conversation. He'd say, why, why didn't you recommend my book? Not that he would ever. Uh, I bought it because it said this, designed to change the way you think. Oh, my gosh. That's probably worth the fact that I bought it. And remember, I work for a company that I had a book budget, so I could do that. Okay. Um, here's, here's what I wrote. I wrote a note in here. It says, why train leaders? Ooh, page 22. Why do you train people? Uh, uh, and look, look at this. So you see several times in here, I put something that says, write it down, capturing idea. Okay. Uh, just as a target shapes and disappears right before your eyes, things will disappear if you don't write them down. So find yourself a target and move in that direction. So he maintains a little red book or a little black book. I carry a journal with me every day and I write things down. I, I carry one, I put one on the nightstand. And so I'll wake up in the middle of the night. Last night I woke up six times. Two times I wrote something down. I wrote a thought down about a bag that I was given yesterday that, and about a story um, about John Browning that I want to use in a, a little 30 second commercial. And I thought, oh no, why did this come to me now? Why can't it come to me tomorrow at 11 o'clock when I'm writing this and I've scheduled time for it? Because I can't schedule creative time. I can't say at 10 o'clock I'm going to be creative. So carry something with you to write it down. Okay? So um, Wisecracks is just a little, uh, This is it is. These were, look, discarded from the library because people thought they were a little probably, who knows, racist today or whatever. I snored so loud I used to wake myself up. Um, so... Um, you know, these are just bad dad jokes. I still use this today with all my grandkids and other kids, and I still remember it so much. I had a wooden whistle. It wouldn't whistle. So I bought a steel whistle. It still wouldn't whistle. I bought a tin whistle, and now I tin whistle. And that's not even on the page. Where is it? It's probably here on the end of this. Um, yeah, here it is. I bought a wooden whistle. It wouldn't whistle. I bought a wooden whistle, but it wouldn't whistle. I bought a steel whistle, but it still wouldn't whistle. So I bought a tin whistle, and now I tin whistle. How wonderful is that for a five-year-old? And so look at the piece of artwork. I was drawn to this book uh, in the 70s. And so I started trying to find one. And one day I'm at a library sale, and two of this artist's books, I went to meet him over in Western North Carolina, or Eastern North Carolina one year. And he had already passed, and I didn't know it. Uh, Alvin Schwartz was a crazy man, but I wanted to see Glenn Rounds. I loved Glenn Rounds' artwork. Look at his people. They're just fantastic. They're just fantastic. Here's a reindeer sitting at a bar having an ice cream sundae. Come on. If that doesn't tell a story, when he arrived, he put a $10 bill on the counter. The waiter thought he didn't know anything about money, and he gave him only a dollar change. He has this, you know, he ordered this hot fudge butterscotch sundae. And uh, so he puts a $10 bill on the counter, the, the reindeer does. And, they, and the, uh, the guy brings him back 50 cents change. He says, you know, said the waiter, you don't get many reindeer in here. And the reindeer said, well, if it's $9 a sundae, you're like, not likely to get many more. Okay, that just cracks me up for some reason. All right, here's the book I think you should own if you don't have this book. It's called Whack on the Side of the Head. And it's by Roger Von Oick. And I think it's been out since the 80s. Uh, 1983, it was originally written. It was redone in 98. So you're going to get a copy like this. I have the original over there. Um, and I've worn one of these out. This is uh, this is a good book for me. It's uh, uh, It's got some great things in it. What is creative thinking? And I see myself come through this book lots of times. I started reading this 30 35 years ago, and now I see some of it coming to fruition. And I went, where did that come from? Wow, opening up middle lock. So if you're thinking about just, uh, um, is the push button telephone the death of the word dialing? I think so. He said, dial their number. And you go, what does that mean, dial their number? 
Would you dial their number? You know, like, we still use the word dial, doesn't it? Isn't that crazy? Okay, the right answer. Uh, anyway, it's it's pretty cool here. Um, so I love I love the concept and the art in here. It's all in black and white. And uh, it's just so cool. So if you want to buy a book and you haven't bought a book this year, buy Whack on the Side of the Head and look at it and think like an artist as you read this. Don't think like, oh, you know, be dissatisfied with something. Say, that really bothers me. I spent all this time on it and I don't like that. I, I should have used another color. Well, for heaven's sake, start using another color. And so go through that. I'm not creative. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. There's nothing new under the sun. You're hearing some of this re, um, regurgitated because I realized as I was talking to someone this week about creativity and how many times have I done this? Listen, my Fox News show, I based the whole traffic report about what if. What if you just slowed down? What if you just let somebody merge in in front of you? There wouldn't be a traffic jam. What if you just got there 20 feet later than the person in front of you? All right, so that's my recommendation today. It only took me 40 minutes to get there. But it's all about being creative, and I want to make sure I got everything on the list. All right, any questions? Um, let me see if there's any. Yesterday, I painted a dog waiting for coffee, and the pot is hanging. Hey, I saw that. Uh, <laughs> hey, Denise. Can we speak to you about what I just saw here? You painted this dog yesterday, and the pot was just hanging there. And you said, that bothered me. And so it, uh, I drew a hand in the picture. Uh, I was going to say, put it on a little shelf, like uh, just a little shelf under it with a little couple screws in the little, uh, you know, uh, pieces that hold the shelf up the supports. And then tie a string around it with a little thing on it. Uh, with a little arrow that shows to pull down. And so it's a self-serve pot that way. That's a very rube way to solve it. You drew a hand in there and now you have the, the complete picture. So I love that you go back and you rethink things. We think something's over and you go like, no, that's a good picture, but it just doesn't have a punch. I noticed it. I love it. Um, uh, Terry Tardy says, that's why I do this. You're so good for me, Kimberly Salowich says. Kimberly, well, uh, hopefully I'm good for your brain so that you say, get creative for heaven's sake. Stop telling yourself you're not and do something creative today. Um, so Heather says, the worst thing you can do is when you're driving and you have a creative idea and you don't write it down. That's not the bad thing at all. You got a, an iPhone probably or a smartphone of some sort. Okay. Somewhere on your phone, you'll have a little app like this one right here. See that one right there that looks like a little sound wave. Okay. Like a little sound wave, you just hit that little app. I keep it on my first page so I can hit it with the phone. And I, and, or in this case, my I have a, a car that's not a new, it's like a 2019, but because my truck at 247,000 miles finally died, I can just push the little key on the steering wheel and say, uh, take a note, please. And it goes, what would you like to say? And I'll say, booda, bada, booda, bada, bada, booda, booda, boom, boom, I'm done. But in this case, if you don't have a car that does that, like my old truck, I would have this phone on the seat and I just reach over and I push this red button like this, ding. And I go, okay, this is a test because I want to remember to tell the people on Roo Doodles Live that all they have to do to be creative is think, hey, I'm creative. Really? Is it that simple? I hit stop. I come up and listen. And I go, okay, this is a test because I want to remember to tell the people on Roo Doodles Live that all they have to do to be creative is think, hey, I'm creative. Really? Is it that simple? I can then, when I stop, take that from this. It, this is not an app that I bought. This comes with your iPhone. It's already on there. You're not using the tools available. If you know how songwriters work, I'm driving down the road and I think, I want to play this song for someone. I want to build this house. I go, I go, oh my gosh, I want something. Boop, I hit this. I'll sing it to myself and then I'll send it to myself later and I have it. Or I'll go back and I'll pull these later. And then five weeks later, I might remember, wait, that tune went through my mind again. So there's your notebook when you're not traveling. If that's a new idea for some of you, ta-da. Oh, look at this. Jason just said I used my phone to record it. <laughs> oh, you guys are awesome. All right. 
I got downsized this week. I went over and bought a copy of this book. It might help me. Yeah, downsized is what we all get. And by the way, uh, this is the time to be creative. If uh, if you you know people used to say, "Hey, I'm sorry you lost your job." I go, well, "I didn't lose it. I didn't lose it. I know right where my job is. They just don't want me in it. Somebody's still going to have to do it. They just didn't think I was the right person." So, or I, that's one of the things that I say. People go, oh, that's a weird way to look at it. I go, no, that's a creative way to look at it because I need to be somewhere else. So, Kimberly, you need to be somewhere else. Um, I left my last job because of a health issue. They were sick of me. I was sick of them too. <laughs> so, I, went, I need to be somewhere else. Uh, if you haven't watched the movie Moneyball in a while, adapt or die. And I used to say to my team all the time, change your diet. They go, hey, but we don't understand. This is this is a church. We, we're based on tradition. And I go, tradition, go home and watch Fiddler on the Roof. Oh, for heaven's sakes. So art uh, has to be based on, sure, some traditional rules. There is a rule of third that draws the eye in. Denise, you're brilliant for going back in and putting a hand in. And so like, what's that coffee pot doing out there? Or draw a word bubble around it. And connect it to the dog. Uh, See, that would have been a way to do it too. He's an imagining. But boop, 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 those little lines out there that you do so well in your cartooning. All of y'all can can do better at doing this, okay? Uh, Kim Lawson says, yeah, when one thing happens, uh, another door opens. Kim, I'll tell you this. Uh, Joseph... Bishop Joseph Garlington, who may be who may be gone on to heaven now, but uh, he was in Pittsburgh, I think, for years. I was in a conference and speaking, and he was there. He spoke one night, and he said, you know, we always say that when one door closes, another one opens. Or when God closes one door, another one opens. He said, I'm going to tell you this. The hallway is hell. And, yeah, it's tough sometimes in the hallway <laughs> until you see where that door is. But you just keep hope, okay? And art is built on hope. I hope I'm going to make this better. Man, I've almost talked the whole hour, and I didn't set out to do this this morning. But for some reason, I woke up and uh, in the middle of the night, and I wrote down creativity. Can you lose it? Can you learn it? Uh, can you improve it? Can you test it? And then I wrote see one, do one. Well, I actually wrote Jim Poole, and it wasn't this morning that I put the little sound down there. And so I just felt like some of you needed to uh, to hear that message this morning uh, about creativity. Uh, <laughs> I had a problem with my last job. Couldn't see going in, in to do it. <laughs> Ah, that's a bad dad joke, but I like it. What do you know about Switzerland? I asked my granddaughters last night, what do y'all know about Switzerland? They went, uh, I said, well, I know this. Flag's a big plus. <laughs> Boom, shh, I'll be here all week. All right, that one across the country today. All right, so this is a little um, uh, Sumi ink. There it is right there. It is black Sumi, S-U-M-I, black ink. Uh, really good stuff. I get that from, uh, this is from Trader Joe's, which actually is uh, from Yasutoma. So, Yasutoma, shout out to you guys this morning. I'm using this. I put it in this little skillet because, well, because I love cast iron. <laughs> Can you tell? All right, one day I'm just going to have a whole round pallet and it's going to be in cast iron. So, I'm going to grab a little bamboo brush here and I'm going to grab um, grab this. Let's see if I can just do this on a little small piece of paper here. Do some little uh, something in, uh, in, in just, just a fun little piece of scrap paper. Here we go. Um pull this out just a little so you can see it a little better. Um, <laughs> Pat Lightbody says I'm feeling it. Is problem solving is problem solving considered creativity? Jason, what a what a softball question. You always ask the best questions, man. I can tell you're in education. Um, cuz you you uh, ask questions for the entire group. Problem solving may be the best form of creativity. So thank you for, for reminding that. And we talked about that in, when we were in the lovely Montreat zone, but I know you worked through that. Uh, uh, some of you know that my, Jason's an architect, my daughter uh, does, was an architect interior design major, five years, University of Tennessee, came out of that, went into an architectural firm for many years. Now is a freelance artist, for heaven's sake. You know her work, uh, True Cotton. But here's the thing. Um, Sometimes at the deadline, I mean, literally a 5.30 deadline at the University of Tennessee, 
the professor, he says, I need everybody here. I want to see how you're doing. we got this deadline. They're all just cramming like this. And they would cut down to the wire. And he'd walk in and he'd go, got everybody's attention here? Listen to this. Client just called. They do not want this and this and this to happen at all on this project. But they can't back off the groundbreaking or they can't do this. They can't bring all the, the equipments on the property. They can't, they can't stop. So you have to have this ready by eight in the morning. Solve the problem. And so they would go, oh my gosh, we better order in. Somebody better go get food. We're here. And they're going like, you can't do, do this. And he goes, welcome to the real world. So this is what happens. Sometimes you have to make that phone call and say, I'm not finished. It's when I'm editing video. Sometimes the client says, oh my gosh, that person that you use their testimony in this video, they don't even work here anymore. This happened to me a few weeks ago. These three teachers that we interviewed aren't even here. And I'm going, I said, that's why I interviewed six. And so I only used two of them and a piece of another one's in the picture. And so I didn't have to reshoot at all, but I had to spend some hours digging in and bringing in the files and reworking the whole thing. Still happens in real life. So that's a great question to ask. If you can problem solve, you're being creative. You're saying, oh, that doesn't connect to that. That doesn't work there. Art is all about solving problems and then coming up with a win sometimes. So fabulous. Um, Terry Tardy says, my elementary school teacher noticed my artistic ability and encouraged me. I ended up getting an art award my senior year. It would have happened that I wouldn't be living as an artist today if it hadn't been for encouraging those early years. I mean, what a great thing. How many teachers encourage people in art? They're always saying, you should be a doctor. And you're like, I really want to be a musician. I really want to be an artist. I really want to be. Um, anyway, so it's it's pretty cool when all that happens. All right, so here's uh, here's where I want to go with this this morning. Just this crazy looking little rooster here. I love painting these uh, roosters that have kind of a ch Japanese style with this ink. Oh, Chinese style, either either one. It's very Asian art, and it's just oh, and now I'm getting it all over me, and I hadn't even been out here too long, and I just dropped some more. I am just absolutely messing this place up. Let's just get rid of this. Here, throw that away. I still got 10 minutes, so it takes you to paint a good piece of it. All right, this is just thin sketching paper, about 50 pound blotter paper. There we go. Here we go. There he is right here. Just going to draw this big old roux here, just like this. Come down. Um, I got to go make some breakfast this morning. I think I'll probably be making some crepes for my granddaughter. Um, I think what I'm going to do is do this Rue. You've seen this Rue. He's got the foot up like this, his legs out. He's coming back. He's uh, he's a little off balance, but you know what? He's on paper, so at least he's hanging there, Denise. So it's okay if there's just a hand coming out of nowhere. It's a hand. We get that. We connect it. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of water here and just splatter some of the water on this. It's going to sink in pretty doggone fast because this is just thin, thin, thin paper, but I'm just going to take a little bit of this black ink and let it roll in there like that and you just let it kind of go wherever it wants to go. Um, and I love doing this because it it drives me, when I talk about creativity, um, this is the painting that I always want to do, and here's why. It pushes me to realize that I'm very much not. That's a uh, undecipherable sentence. I'm not very much, but I'm very much not in control. Okay. I'm very much in control. No, I'm not. Is kind of where I wanted to go with that. So you see what's happening there is that this becomes just wherever I put the water, it's starting to run down. And so then this bamboo brush gives me the ability to just look, I'm holding it. I'm way back here. Gives me the ability to just dance with some just rough stuff on this. I like these roosters that look like they've been out in the weather all night or they're out in the storm. Um, man, uh, we had some 85 mile an hour winds that came ripping across parts of uh, our uh, just just 20 miles from here. I mean, big time wind. You're going like, what in the world is going on? Okay, so I'm going to add a little color to him just because I want to and I can. It's my rooster. I don't have to stay black with the whole roo. So I'm just going to grab that little red out of. Remember, I sprayed this palette over here. It's right under my face, so I'll move it so you can see it right there. Can you see that? Nope. And I just put my, uh, here, I'll put it over here. Boy, that'll be upside down for me because you get used to it. tradition, tradition. Might make me a little more creative to see these colors differently here. And I'm going to reach in here, get a little bit of gamboge right there, just there. So if you can't see the colors I'm mixing, a little gamboge 
here. I sprayed these colors with a little touch of water to loosen them up. Just a touch of this uh, Hot Mama red right there. Get a little bit of orange coming down on this leg. That's a little too orange for me. So I'm just going to put some gamboge on top of that orange and break it up a little bit. Pull some of that down into the foot. Um, I don't like the chicken legs too orange. They look like they've been cooked and I don't like... Uh, um, I don't like it when my feet are cooked. Okay, so here we go and put a little piece in there. Tiny bit. Look at this. I'm just going to barely touch that and drag it in a little. Maybe a touch of just orange right in there too. And then a little, little red come in there, a little orange right there. And so I suddenly have this, uh, suddenly have this orange on my shirt from slapping it just like that. Okay, so... So then uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back in here and just carefully not trying to hit this and put a little eye in here. Just a little bead and then a little bit of pencil. Look at that. Okay. And some more. When this dries a little bit, I'll, uh, I'll put some of this on there. So for me, I take a run at this and go, that's about as creative as you can be. These white strips are really the, the light reflecting on it. Can you see? It's really, let's see if I can get that my hand where it shadows that. See, that looks like a white streak, but that's really just a nice piece. But all these are holidays. This will continue to dry in a beautiful gray. And that is one dip of the brush, two dips of the brush in a little bit of Sumi ink. Uh, it is so fun to play with. It just makes me laugh how it races across the page. And uh, I just touched a little of that black up in there because I wanted that. And I'm going to do the same thing with the legs here. I'm just touching a little bit of the black here and letting it run down. In this case, um, what I might do is I'm going to come in with a little bit of uh, just some, some green here and just pop a little bit of green underneath him. Um, this is the kind of painting that I would do in a school when I'm talking about creativity and I go there and this is what I'd sort of leave them with. And I'd rip this off the board. I'd sign it and I'd say, pin this to the wall and go figure out how in the world you're going to be looser in your painting or you're going to be more creative. Sometimes you just have to have the figure and start. So for the next couple minutes here, uh, a quote for your paintings, erasers were made for people who make mistakes. <laughs> erasers were made for people willing to fix them. I love it. Kids don't worry about failure when learning to walk right. Yeah. And, uh, oh my gosh. Uh, these are great uh, quotes this morning. Um, so, simplicity is the ultimate, uh, yeah, sophistication, Da Vinci. Da Vinci can do it, huh? Man, that guy can bring it on. Um, all right. Uh, all right, here we go. Look at this. You didn't know this was going to happen, did you? Just dragging it up there and letting it finish up. I'm not trying, I'm not, and if I go back, I've made a mistake. You know what I'm saying? A little water in this brush and watch this just come out with a little perfect leaf there. This leaf right here just kind of fell apart. But most times you don't ever want to go back when you're doing these. You just want to let the leaves kind of fall down like that. And so I suddenly have this Japanese looking rooster going into the bamboo. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in and I'm going to add a little color to this bamboo. I'm going to drag a little green right over the top of it, just like that with the same brush. Because it's still growing. It's not. Uh, and so I'm going to just add a little bit of this in the leaves and come back. Uh, this is just play for me on this paper. And so, by the way, this paper is better than watercolor paper for uh, a smooth paper or a, a uh, hot press paper is a lot better for watercolor painting or for, or for ink painting sometimes than uh, other papers. Just grab a pencil here and just give this a little bit of a green splatter around here like this. And then some more water in there like so. Just throw some of this water in. And then I'm going to grab a straw that I have here because I've got enough on my shirt already and I'm going to lean down here.
just blow some of that in and sort of create a little bit of a a little bit of a green forest down there. I like that color. I'm going to throw a little bit of different color green in here, sort of a green gold right here. And then also just some uh, what I might call verdant green or just a darker uh, olive, olive or spring green. I'm going to throw that in. A little water on top of that also. And just some vines that kind of run out through there. And so now I sort of have this painting that is just this rooster walking through this uh, and he's going like, uh, so what, what's he going to say? Let's finish his comment here. And it's 957. And uh, here we go. I'm going to push this up so you can see what we're Dang. Not one bug. That's not true. Over here. I'm going to put a little ladybug hiding behind this last little branch right there. Oh, right here is a little ladybug. Eight dollars. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Bob Ross bamboo time. <laughs> all right. So there you go. Now look what's happening to this. See how it's drying in with all these different... Uh, uh, Fumata's in it, all these mushroom clouds that are approaching. So look, this, uh, this painting is going to go right down the bunny trail. Uh, and, uh, but the point is I wanted to show you how simple it is to just start with something and do it. Now, if I did this 50 times, I'd get so much better at the bamboo. I'd get better at this rooster. I'd say this is too much. I wish I hadn't put all the water in there. I critique it myself and go from there. So, uh, did I win the auction last night? June Jones, you did. You were under the wire. You The other bid came in three minutes after my 930 change of, of time. And I apologize. My Facebook split yesterday and some quotes, some of the things for that painting went to another page that was just, I, I, and I restarted it all. But uh, yeah, thank you. So I hope it didn't mess anybody up. But uh, yes, you did. So June, uh, send me an email. Thank you for mentioning that. Okay. Um, I'll go back through these. I love, love these tiny cast iron frying pans. Yeah, this one is a, actually, a friend of mine gave it to me. Uh, ben gave me this. He uh, represented this company for a while called Butter Pat, and they are a new company in the business of cast iron, and they've done uh, a brilliant job of making cast iron the way cast iron was made before 1950. Very, very slick before we went with the pre-seasoned cast iron that feels like sandpaper. Uh, when you're doing an omelet, a Julia Child's omelet in one of the pre ones, or even in the new butter pat, and uh, another company out of Charleston is doing that too, uh, Smithy. Their but their pans are very heavy. But I have I have one of their steel pans. It was a gift. It was given to me, and because they really are proud of them, they're expensive pans. But um, I had a chef send me one. And, uh, Anyway, so that's kind of where I am with this. So I love these little cast iron pans. And I, I'm always on the look for a couple more because they make great little mixing pallets and they wash out really easy. And uh, anyway, uh, and Lodge makes some little. These were, these uh, modeled after uh, salesman models for, in the early uh, turn of the century when salesmen used to go around and uh, sell cast iron. They would actually use stuff like this to say, this is what it looks like. And, and so some farmers would go, well, my egg won't even fit in that, for heaven's sake. Because this is just a, a, a miniature model of what yours is going to look like. And he goes, no, I want to know what mine's going to look like. So the guy, you know, he goes, I can't travel on a train with, you know, 13 different cast iron pans or a, a wood cook stove. So that's how that came about. I know all that because I love it. Okay, Kimberly says $15. How serious, Pat says $8. <laughs> okay, I'll put it out there. Some of you guys can have it. I'll sign it. Here we go. Hey, Rude Doodles. I'm going to sign it right here. Right here. Look, I'm going to sign it here. Rude Doodles. And then I'm going to put it, uh, I'm going to put uh, 23 on it. And then I'm going to do a little arrow right here. And that's the bug right there. The two little arrows leading to the bug. And I'm going to go in there and I'm going to heighten that bug. And I'm really going to get that bug in there a little bit. I got one more minute to get the bug. Now I'm over time anyway, but it doesn't matter. Here we go. Look, I got a red watercolor pencil. I'm going to go right in there. Oh, I put the little red ladybug in right there. All right. 
I, I'll roll this up, put it in a tube. I think this is the last page on here. Uh, but I may work on it a little bit. I might do a couple more little details. I don't want to go out the door completely unfinished, but I want you to see how simple it is to just do a little piece like this and have some fun with it. Um, think about all of, um, think about what architects do sometimes when they come in and just do the little bit of the pen work here, the brush in the background. They just come in like that and make this look so simple and so fun and we're spending all this time trying to figure out how did they get that tree to work up there those of you who do cartoon drawings and things like that you just do such a great job of doing that so don't give up on that because your audience understands what it is that you're doing they get it okay they know they know what you're doing i'm gonna back out this camera just one more time put a couple put a little, little blue up here and you know if there's enough blue in the sky to make cat britches it probably isn't going to rain. Okay, so this is the working uh, model for today. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, purple right here in the bottom because it needs it on the bottom end to just make your eye pop down there. And a little bit of this splatter around. And a little bit of uh, Payne's Gray splatter. Ah, now we're done. Okay, finished. Fine. All right, I'm out of here like her off to the dentist junior prom. <laughs> I think the problem is not at the dentist. <laughs> ah, love it, love it, love it. Hey, you guys uh, make my day, and it's always fun to hang out with you for a while. Let's go make some crepes and then record a song that my granddaughter has written. I think that is just going to be fun. I'm going to set up the studio for her and uh, clean up all this paint and ink work and all that stuff. And, uh, and then I've got a graduation party to go to today and to celebrate some friends. <laughs> I'm out of here like a herd of turtles. Blessings to you all. Thanks for being a part of the show. I'll see you next time. We want to hear a song. Okay, I will. If, if the recording comes out all right, I may play the song. She wrote a song about the fifth grade uh, class, about how fast the time has come and uh, what's happening now that that time has come. Okay, so I'll let you hear it. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs>